In this video, we're going to be looking at tooltips, and they're really interesting because they're when you hover over them, interact with them, they provide a little bit more, I guess, instructions, expression about something going on in the screen. I know that's a little bit abstract of me to say, but when we get into actually looking at them in the docs and then coding them up, you will see that uh, you've definitely seen them before. You may not have known they're called tooltips, but... Anyways, we're going to look at the docs, then we'll get to coding. And so let's get to seeing what these are all about. And so it says tooltips. Uh, it's a brief informative message that appears when a user interacts with an element. Tooltips are usually initiated one of two ways, through a mouse hover gesture or through a keyboard hover gesture. And so we have this uh, tooltip right here. It's just one thing we're bringing on in. And so it says, there's this note right here. Um, let's read above. It says, if the children of a tooltip is a string, we wrap it uh, within a span with the tab index set to zero to ensure it meets the accessibility requirements. And then it says right here, note, if the tooltip is wrapping a functional component, ensure that the functional component accepts a ref using forward ref. So I don't use forward refs a whole lot or refs in general. But let's walk through this down here together. I'm sure this is not going to be the most common cause or I'd say composition going on here. But we have this custom card here, which is this react.forwardref. We have the children. We have the spread operator right here. And then we're passing a ref alongside of it. We have the box. We have the tag itself. And then we have ref equals ref, which is this thing incoming. And then, you know, we have the rest spread stuff coming in here and then whatever children may be. So then we have this custom tooltip here. We have this tooltip and the label says hover me and we have the custom card, which is this above. So it's being wrapped inside the tooltip. So really this is a tooltip with a box and then a tag on the inside and it's having this ref forwarded to it. So when we hover, it says hover me. And so if you were to do it this way, I would just kind of verbatim copy this pattern right here and then move on from there. So if we want to look at the basic example of just pulling it in, we have the tool tip and opening and closing tag. A label says, hey, I'm here, which is appearing at the bottom. And it says, are you label uh, a tool tip? And so that is just a way for, you know, screen readers and stuff to know more about what this is right here. And so we could do it with an icon as well. So rather than just have the hover me text right here, we could come in and put in a icon. And it says, no, if you're wrapping an icon from uh, the React icons, you need to also wrap it in a span as React icons. And it says, uh, do not use the forward ref right here. So just know that if you're using React icons, just wrap it in a span. And, but that's you know minimal work, so you should be fine there. And we have has arrow. And so this is kind of hard because I'm using an arrow. So let me move a little bit off to the side. But we can see rather than that box that we just get below. So let's come up here. So we just kind of have a box right here, like a this black box, right? And the font size is the, the medium there. So it's standing out a bit more. If we come down, we have this arrow that's pointing directly to the icon right here. Gives it a little bit of meaning. May not mean you know everything in the world, but stylistically, if that's something you want to have across your website or web application, go for it. All you have to do is add the has arrow in here, and you'll get a nice little arrow on top of the you know box here. And so it says tooltip with focusable content. And so if the children of the tooltip is a focusable element, the tooltip will show when you focus or hover on the element and will hide when you blur or move the cursor out of the element. And so we see that going on right there. We have the has arrow going, and that's just you know an example of what they're stating above. We could have disabled or hovering over it right now, and nothing's happening because all we had to do was add disabled in here. So right here we have the placement prop. And when I first went over this, I was thinking like, Placement. Oh, this is kind of weird. It's more talking about the H stacks and V stacks because how these are all, you know, put in here. So it's kind of easy for me to gloss over. But this is where all um, the places that you could put 
the tool tip to actually be displayed. So we have auto start, which is right there. We have auto and auto end. So, you know, auto is a little bit kind of the center to the left. And then we have auto end, which is toward the top. We have the top start, top, top end. So you notice as I come through, it starts at the, you know, aligned left, aligned center, then aligned right. And this is kind of how they are. So the, the right is going to start at the top, go to the center of this, you know, um, tool tip here, the button, and then at the bottom. So the bottom start should be to the bottom left, and then bottom center, and then bottom right. And you may want to change these depending on screen size. So if this is on the right side of the page, you may not want your tooltip going to the right end because it may get cut off or just look kind of funny. So be aware of where it's at on the page and what's surrounding it. You may need to change this stuff on the fly, which, you know, for placement here, as long as you have, you know, it's just a string being passed in, you could gather other information about, you know, the size of the page or whatever it may be. And you may want some kind of like dynamic value. And so we have some more examples right here. We see right here it says open on startup. I'm going to kind of navigate right here. And to the left of my arrow right here, we have open on startup. If we come down here to open on startup, we have this default is open right here. And so I wish this was called out a bit more explicitly. I'd rather have like a million little examples than all of this kind of just, you know, thrown together. But this, as soon as you open the page, it loads all that other stuff. You could see it right away. We see this always open right here. So we have is open. And it's set to true. So if we see this here, it's set to true. If we want to set it to false, it'll be closed. So this gives you the ability to toggle it on or off. And so there's other examples on here. So there's this, you know, close uh, on click, which is set to false right here. So if we were to come close on click. So if we hover over this close on click, we can see the tooltip down below. If we click it, it goes away. This not so much and so we do close on click equals false this right here in the tooltip itself doesn't have the close on click explicitly set in there but in the background it is set to true so if you wanted to explicitly call it out so it's close on click equals true just because you want that in your code you could definitely do that but it's automatically set to true in the background if not called out and then we could come in here and then we could do stuff open delay, close delay. And so that would just be open delay, close delay right here, just these two props. So if we want to come here and delay open after 500 milliseconds, close, so we're going to click and then bam, it goes away. And then we have the arrow size and it looks pretty thick right there down there at the bottom. And they're doing that with has arrow and then the arrow size is 15. What would it be? Let's just do something for fun. I actually have not done this yet. Let's do 150. See how big that is. <laughs> that's pretty massive. You wouldn't want it ever to be 150, but that's, that's how it would look. That's kind of funny. And so then we have the props down here. You know, be sure to look over these, see if there's any additional ones that may help you in case you forget like myself. But you know what? Let's, uh, let's just get to coding. All right, in this tutorial, and there's just one tutorial for this because tool tips aren't the, you know, they're cool, but, you know, some other uh, components you could do a ton of variation stuff with. And I think this out of the box, they're pretty simple. So let's go ahead and make a tool tip. So we have both of these tool tips right here. And so as you guessed it, we got some text right here slapped in the middle here. And when we hover over it, it says, this label exists on this tool tip. I couldn't think 
think of anything else interesting to say until we got to the second one where we have the hamburger icon. As you can see, it's not just text. You could put icons in here too. Pictures, whatever else. When you hover over them, it says, this label says you want a burger. Well, that's pretty cool. And so this is tooltips. Sometimes you're going to want the user to have the ability, especially on desktop here, or maybe even with like the, you know, screen readers, other kinds of stuff. You're going to want to give them extra information, especially if, you know, maybe you, uh, you're known to your coworkers for having a, you know, your diction is quite large. You have a lot of words that, uh, you know, you're writing out there, you're being very verbose in your instructions, maybe for something coding. And someone says, hey, you're using a little too much technical jargon or, you know, something along those lines or acronyms. And so little things like this here give just a nice extra little bit of meaning to users if they don't understand a word, context, or something, you know, on your web page. So tooltips, they're a small little component here, but don't neglect them. They're quite powerful and could do a lot for your end user. So if you like what I'm doing, like, share, subscribe. Uh, I love doing this. I, I make like no money off this right now. And if I were, it'd probably be like five bucks a year. I just love sharing knowledge. So see y'all in the next video.